another daily dose of insights powered by Container Exchange. My name is Christian, and every other day we bring to you the key news, stories, and data points that move container markets and hence your business. Today, of course, all eyes are on the Fed um, with regards to their interest rate policy decision um, due today. Um, of course, high uncertainty there. It used to be expected that uh, another 0.5 percentage hike um, is on the cards, but since the turmoil in the banking sector, there's a high doubt about this. And now uh, the expectations vary from um, keeping rates stable to just a quarter uh, percentage point increase. Apart from that, a very interesting story I read yesterday from the Brookings um, Institute, um, or institution, which is a nonprofit research institute in the US, and they looked at trade patterns in Southeast Asia. We talked about trade patterns in Southeast Asia for quite a quite a while now, but primarily in light of the diversification of global supply chain, namely driven by uh, the big east-west trades becoming a little bit more fragmented, um, more diversified, uh, primarily also to manufacturing hubs in Southeast Asia away from China. Now, this blog post takes a little bit of a different view and looks at actually the domestic um, uh, demand growth um, within Southeast Asia, and hence the share of trade um, that is destined for final destination in Southeast Asia for, 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 for domestic consumption. Over the past 10 years, a domestic demand growth in Southeast Asia has averaged uh, an increase of 6.4% every year. Um, and this, of course, uh, significantly surpassed um, global GDP growth and also uh, some domestic GDP growth. Um, as a result, the share of domestic um, trade or trade that is destined for domestic consumptions has increased from about 12.4% um, 10 years ago to now more than 30%. Um, just highlighting the emergence of that region, not just as a manufacturing hub for exports and for uh, global consumption, but also as a driver of actual um, freight demand. For container traders and freight forwarders out there, of course, um, another reason to look deeper into that region and to find out business opportunities there. Um, if you want to learn more about um, the region, we just issued our Asia forecaster yesterday, um, went out yesterday, um, which sheds a little bit more light on the regional trends with regards to, <clears throat> for example, container uh, prices and trade patterns. Cool. Apart from that, let me just quickly uh, share my screen here. Just want to give you a, a quick overview of um, what is happening on the container market front. We're here looking at um, 40 foot high cubes, uh, cargo worthy. Um, and uh, as you can see, um, container prices seem to be bottoming out. Um, globally, we just had a 0.3% decrease of container prices um, week over week, um, which, uh, if you compare that to the last few weeks, is, uh, is almost flat <clears throat> the last few weeks. Um, were significantly um, uh, negative. And um, looking into more detail, it was actually driven by just two regions, North America and Southeast Asia, that uh, pushed uh, global prices uh, down. Um, and uh, and those uh, two regions were, in the last uh, few weeks, historically the ones that actually um, held up quite well. Um, so uh, now there seems to be a little bit of a correction going on in both uh, directions. On the sentiment index, so as a reminder, we concurrently ask um, uh, freight professionals and container traders um, for their expectations about container price developments over the next few weeks, um, and uh, uh, and uh, basically look uh, look for an answer to the question of will container prices increase or decrease. Um, in the next few weeks. Um, and uh, the index that we compose of that is basically a sentiment index. And as you can see here, it continues to trend in slightly negative territory, um, meaning that the industry overall still expects a further decrease of uh, container prices in the next um, few weeks, um, which of course um, also impacts, uh, for example, freight rate negotiations uh, that are currently ongoing. Carriers I don't want to lock in uh, rates that are below cost and shippers don't want to log in any rates that are above spot rates, particularly if they expect spot rates to continue to decrease. Cool. That's it from me, from us, from for today, uh, here from Hamburg, from our operations center. Um, have a good uh, trading day and speak to all on Friday. Thanks and take care. Bye-bye.